Hello, this is Courtney with Ginger Knots, and I wanted to do my version of what I like to call a super scarf. Now, my understanding of what a super scarf is, is just a really big, extra fluffy scarf that's going to actually keep you warm this winter instead of let all the air right through. So this one is going to be beginner level because it is only chains and single crochets. So it should be doable for anyone, even if this is, uh, you know, your first time picking up yarn. Uh, and a hook. So if that is you, please let me know in the comments and please let me know if it's easy or hard or too fast or too slow. Um, and because I'm aiming this for beginners, I am going to go a lot slower than I would in some of my other videos that are just projects for somebody who's not a beginner. Um, so the yarn I am using today is called Color Made Easy. It's by Lion Brand and it is a size 5 yarn. That means it is a little bit fluffier or chunkier than standard worsted weight yarn that you might find uh, in abundance in the craft stores. I'm trying to actually find where it says the size of the yarn. Sometimes, oh, right in front of my face, right there. So it says size five bulky yarn. And I want it to be kind of slouchy and extra squishy. So I'm using a larger hook than what the yarn calls for. That's kind of how I like to do things because I like I don't like really stiff uh, scarves and things. I want them to be kind of loose and drapey and squishy. So that's how I make that happen by using a slightly bigger hook than we actually need. So in one of my other videos, I gotta go into more detail on how I do a slip knot. Uh, you can look there, you can look up how to do it in lots of places, but really you're just making a circle with your yarn and then you want to pull your long working end, not your short guy right there, your long working end through that hole and it'll give you a slip knot. I used to, when I first started crocheting, I would try to tie a, a knot that was exactly the right size rather than uh, do a slip knot and I, I realized way too long into things that I uh, was doing it a little more difficult than I needed to. So again, you're doing a circle and you're pulling your long end through it. So for my big scarf, this scarf has 155 starting chains. I do not like to count starting chains. That is not fun for me. So I, after I did count these finally today, uh, but it measures for me about 80 inches long. So if you'd rather just do your chains and have them be 80 inches long, then you don't have to count your starting chains because the count for this scarf does not really matter very much, thankfully. So to chain, uh, the most important part is gonna be to have your tension be good along the way. So I like to go over under with my fingers to help control how fast the yarn flows through. And I do have an infinity scarf tutorial that goes into a bit more detail about how to hold your yarn. Some people do it like that. Um, some people just leave it under one like this. Just depends on how tight you want that to be. And then you're going to pinch this knot here with your middle finger and your thumb. And this is what controls your tension. This is going to be either really tight or really loose and that makes it a lot easier if it's just like about that tight to keep your tension. But more importantly is that you do it the same way throughout. So if you're a little tight you want to stay tight the whole time. If you're a little loose you want to stay that way the whole time. Both are just fine. So to chain you're going to start with your hook. I like to call this part right here the nose. You're going to wrap the nose down in front of your guitar string that you've got right here. Cross it over your nose and then I like to twist down because otherwise it can be difficult to get through this circle. So you twist your nose down and then you can pull down on it and slide it through and up. So that's how I like to chain. Again more videos on how to do that. You're going to chain 155 and that just sounds ridiculous so I don't expect you to count again you can just start going and make your nice long chain uh, however you'd like I know I kind of started whipping through these so uh, to slow down you're gonna go again underneath cross in front turn your nose down and pull through and I want you to try to do it the same way every single time because otherwise your starting chain can end up uh, you know, having 
stitches that look different so it's harder to work into and when you have 155 in a row it can be really tedious and hard to work into so as long as you do it with your nose in facing up go in front twist it down and pull through every single time you should be just fine so now that I'm gonna pretend like I have 155 here I definitely don't and I don't think you want to watch me work into 155 stitches I'm actually gonna shorten it up even more just because I want to make sure I have time to get through this entire video so here's my starting chain I think there's maybe about 10 there from here I'm going to work into the second chain from hook so the one that's on there right now doesn't count so this one here is the first one it's impossible to work into that one so you're either always going to be working into the second or third or or something like that so I'm going to work into the second chain from my hook and I'm gonna do a single crochet so for a single crochet you're going to insert your hook into the space I only like to work into one some people like to pick up two I'm a one kind of person so I'm gonna have this guy right next to me insert your hook with your nose down then you're going to pull that yarn across your nose I call that grabbing your buddy so if you hear me refer to that that's what I mean grab your buddy pull him back through the loop and twist up so we're turning our nose up now and then just like a chain you're gonna go down in front and grab your yarn twist down and then you can pull down on that to create space for your hook to slide through and so now we're gonna move on to the next one this is something that can be a little difficult when you're a beginner is to know which one is worked and which one's not if I'm not pulling up on this it might look like this right here is another stitch to work but I've already done it and you can tell because it kind of gets a little pulled um, or just pull up and see which one your stitch is attached to so I want to make sure I move to the next one so I'm going to insert my hook nose down grab my buddy and pull him back through the circle lift up so I have two lines yarn over twist my nose down and pull through and up so now I can tell that this line is already worked so I want to make sure I move on to the next one and I'm going to keep doing that all the way across I can hear I can hear him out there doing something with a turkey I think I don't know if it was all the way thought we'll find out insert there grab your buddy pull up a loop we're gonna single crochet all the way across now for you guys who are obviously not going to be doing this short one you're going to have 155 stitches this would be a good point to pause the video and get yourself all the way down your long chain until you get to the end and the end oops see I accidentally grabbed some extra so I want to make sure I fix that and then here's my end my starting knot my starting slip stitch so I'm gonna single crochet into that one so this is what it's gonna look like it doesn't look like much and it can end up being kind of curly and wonky that's why you want to try to make sure when you're doing your starting chains that you're not being too tense because when you work back into it the starting chain will be really tight and then your stitches will be looser so just make sure in that beginning you're nice and relaxed on your chains and you will have it lay flat when you're all done okay so we're gonna work into the next row this is a good pickup point for those of you who pause the video you're going to chain up one so you're gonna yarn over turn your nose down and pull through I like to pull that just a little tighter on these sides it'll make your sides a little more straight and then turn your work and this row is one that's going to be just a little different from the rest so we do have row repeats which are my favorite thing when I was a beginner is repeats uh, on the top here you've got these little V's I like to call them bunny ears um, so you have a front one which is the one that's facing us or facing me and then you have a back loop for this row we're gonna only work in one of those loops and same thing for the rest of the scarf but for this one we're gonna work in the front loop instead of both so that's not true for the first stitch every single row the first stitch you're gonna work both and the same thing with the last stitch you're gonna work both and that just gives you a little more solid 
of a frame and you'll kind of see what I mean as I get going here. So I'm going to insert my hook in, under both bunny loops there. Grab my buddy and pull him back through and yarn over and pull through both my single crochet there. So I'm worked into both stitches. So now my next one, I'm going to only work into one and that's going to be my front loop right there. So here's my back loop and here's my front loop. I'm going to insert my hook only into the front loop and grab my buddy and single crochet. And I'm going to do that all the way across. So the next one I'm grabbing the front loop only and I'm going to single crochet. I'm going to pick up my speed a little bit. So again, you may have to pause the video while you work your way in the front loop only along your 80 inches of stitches and my yarn is caught over here. So front loop only until you get all the way to the end. So now I've worked all the way along in the front loop and my ending stitches are right here. This can be a little tough to see. You can see that there's something sticking out down there, but you've actually got to kind of turn it to look at the top to see the last bunny ears. So you can see there's the two lines there. I want to grab both of them for the ending stitch. If you only grab one, it can sometimes pull and get really loose and we don't want that. We want our edges to be nice and clean and we want them to stay like that. Um, so we'll grab both. You insert your hook, grab your buddy, pull up the loop, and single crochet. And so that is row two. Now this is row three and beyond. So you're going to chain up one, turn your work, single crochet into both loops in the first one. And then instead of single crocheting in the front loops only, we're going to work into the back loops. So I'm going to skip over this line and I'm going to go to that line right here in the back. Insert my hook, grab my buddy, finish my single crochet, and I'm going to do that all the way down. So why I, and you can tell after I get along here, the reason we do that is because it just gives us a different look. It, inserting your hook into a different spot just changes the texture. Even though you're doing the same stitch, it makes the project look totally different. Um, so you can get a lot of different types of things done with just chains and single crochets. Um, so I'm to my end now. My last bunny ears is here and you can see that line kind of goes across letting us know it's the end. So we're going to work into both of those. So you can see the difference there. This one is kind of flat down here when I worked into the front loops. Now I'm working in the back loop and it's giving us a, an edge here. It's kind of like a little shelf. So we're as we work, we're going to continue to work in the back loops and it's going to give us those little alternating shelves that this one does. And I hope the lighting adjusts so you can see that well. Dark blue is a really hard one to see, which is why I switched to this light color. Um, you can see the shelf. So you can see this one was similar to that first one. And then I switched to the back loops and it gave us these shelf like looks. So we're going to keep going. So you chain one. Turn your work, work into both loops for the first one, and then work into the back loop only for the rest of them all the way across. And my yarn is stuck again because I threw my scarf down on top of it. Don't, don't want to do that. <laughs> back loop only here. Full transparency, I painted my nails this morning to do this YouTube video and I didn't realize they were going to kind of match what I was working on. I usually like to get my nails done for YouTube videos, but this is pure laziness on my part. Didn't feel like going and getting my nails done. All right, we're at the end. And we're going to work under both right here. And so you can see now that it is, this is the back side of the work. And we have one shelf here and we still have the one shelf on the other side. Do a couple more rows so you can kind of see what it's supposed to look like. So again, working into both loops in the first one and then back loops across I like this scarf because I think it's kind of unisex I uh, took some pictures with it earlier today and I liked it for me I love blue 
but then I think the straight lines and you know the the straight edges and that means that I I think it would look good on a on a man too so I'm gonna make my little brother model it for me um, here we're at the end the working under both loops of the last one and now we've got two shelves so we're gonna work until we have a total of 22 rows so this one down here that we did first with this line here is the first row and then uh, once we start working in the back loops we're gonna do 20 rows of them in the back loops so that's one two three four so I would keep on going and my scarf ends up measuring I probably should have measured it before I said that but this is a total this is one here and one up here and then the ridges along the way there are 20 of them so I can see there's 10 on this side and there's going to be 10 ridges on this side so that it's hard to see the rows once you let it get all bunched up but if you pull it tight you can see the rows if you need help counting or even if you if you want it to be skinnier or wider you're going to have an even number of the ridged rows I think right one two three six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 18, 19, 20. That's correct. An even number working in the back loop only. So I have currently one, two, three, four working in the back loop only. So I'm going to chain up one and we're going to pretend I have 20. So this will be the end here. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work under both loops for the first one and then we're going to go back to our first row where instead of working in the back loop we worked in the front so we're going to work in the front loop for our final row this will be row number 22 if you're working the full scarf instead of my little square example front loop only and then we're going to work into both of them for the last one and that's it this is the last stitch of the scarf if you've worked I'm gonna pull that one just a little tighter because I don't want it to stick out very much and then I'm gonna cut my yarn and then you'll yarn over and you'll pull it through I like to leave it kind of loose here so that I can pull that stitch down and then I pull that tight and so this will be you can see how it kind of these kind of frame your shelf stitches and that's how you do it and then if you do the same number that I suggested it'll be this gigantic squishy scarf um, that is pictured in the beginning please let me know if there's any other thing I could do to make this process easier for you it will be a written pattern on ginger knots Dot com and come on over and let me know on my Instagram what you think. It is at ginger.nuts.